Welcome to World Revolution, a podcast where we take hobbyist, cult, or otherwise unknown role-playing games absolutely seriously. I'm Larry Lewin, and you probably know me as an eccentric and contrarian on Dead Genre Chronicles. I love small games, so I wanted to make a podcast where we talked about generally unrenowned independent games. My co-host is the illustrious John Thayer, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, my name is John Thayer. Um, I make games you can play on farawaytimes.com, and I'm here because I also like talking about small games. Yeah, there you go. The game this month was Mittens, a surreal RPG released in 2012, where a player explores a surreal landscape while interacting with denizens of the void. It was developed by John Clowder, not to be confused, also known as Takamo. Their devlogs could be found on Uboachan, a Yumi Nikki fan board showing a direct line of influence or, you know, it's not a Yumi Nikki fan game, but they love Yumi Nikki, obviously. And, um, so you're pretty mixed on the game, right? Yeah. <laughs> Get someone up like that. Yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, I'm interested in kind of dissecting both of our reactions to it so that we can kind of get paint kind of a bigger picture of the story through both yeah. of our lenses. You know, I was I was really excited about it at first only because so so a pet project I wanted to do since I played Yumi Nikki, I was like, you know what would be so cool is if Yumi Yumi Nikki had random battles that would just be awesome and then, you know, after playing Mittens was like, well, actually, you know, that doesn't automatically make it awesome. Like, because <laughs> <laughs> at first I was like, oh man, this is like the exact kind of idea I want to implement. And I, I'm really jealous of this kind of atmosphere they have going on. And then I got a couple hours in, and I'm like, oh, I'm really bored. This is really boring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad that I'm glad that my experiences are kind of make sense there. Right, right, right. Well, but I went, I went the nine yards. I. I genocided everything, I guess you could Good, because I didn't. Yeah. It, <laughs> so I'm glad that one of us did. Anyone who's listening, I recommend not doing that, because that was... Oh, it took, like, close to 15 hours. What? Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, okay. You know how the ending changes when you get 70 nothings, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I got 320 nothings. So, I I really... I didn't know there were that many nothings. <laughs> there was a lot. I, hey, there... hey. I beat the game with, like... 45 nothings. Yeah, yeah. I, I beat was... in like three hours. So, 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 so <laughs> I saw someone else, uh, it was on RPGmaker.net, and they mm-hmm. described how they played the game, which was just, they walked through the game, and whenever, because there are enemies that are aggressive in the void, and whenever, you know, they got aggressed on, that's the only enemies they, they killed, they call it quote-unquote pacifist. There's no such thing in the lore, it's not how the game works. But, I would recommend playing the game like that, rather than trying to track down every single uh, denizen and kill them, because it takes a long there time. There's a lot of them. And it's not very rewarding. No, but I did it. It was uh, an experience because I was extremely, extremely sick while I did it. Like, <laughs> I was running a fever of 100, so it wasn't terrible, but it, I mean, I wasn't feeling great. It reminds Oof. me of, I played all of in 2 with um, a hand injury, basically. I could only use one hand. A very miserable experience. But then I played, I don't know, I played all of it. <laughs> Oh, all right. So I think uh, I think a, another running thread for World Revolution is um, was he going just the extra nine yards for the story, and then me just being like, "Yeah, I played it for three <laughs> hours," and it's, nah. <laughs> that should happen every I time. Think, but uh, yeah, I figured I needed to, to be honest to my like natural playing style, how I would experience this story, because I I didn't just um, because I didn't do the pacifist route, like you said. I did, I just. What I did was just I fu- I fought everything I could, and then when I when I was able, and then after I got about thirty five nothings, and then I was like I was like up to thirty, and then I was like let me do more so that I can get more of the experience, and I got to thirty five, and I was like I'm done, <laughs> and then I went and finished the game up. So, and then that meant that I didn't really get like a super intimate connection with the spaces because you can wipe out thirty nothings worth of enemies like without moving around very much. No, uh, exploring it is actually really rewarding it's mm-hmm. although i want to say it's a, like it's a beautiful game but it's an ugly game right and it it shows off its ugliness probably more often than trying to be like trying to capture your breath it's a it's a very different beast than you actually in that regard yeah with 
like the ideal way to play it would have been probably would have been for what do what I did with you may Nikki, which was where I kept kind of a diary um, where I just listed where I explained like, Oh, I went here and then there's this connection to this spot and actually trying to build up a mental map of the spaces. I didn't really do that. Um, I think the last area I kind of explored for a while was the subway, which I found pretty resonant, but there, I never developed like a, a relationship with the space like I did with you and Nikki. That, uh, uh, well, so I mean, I, I mapped through all the areas, and it's actually mm-hmm. it's a lot more comprehensible than you mean, Key. And if you if you you'll it's there's like hub areas, and they all connect to each other, and they 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 reconnect to each other. But you can kind of map it out without like if I would play Yumi Nikki and I tried to map it out in my head, it would be extremely difficult. But I was able no, to do I needed, it. I needed to. Yeah, I needed a notebook. You for needed Yuminiki. you needed a notebook. But but I was able to do I was able to map out middens in my head while being very sick and. Actually, I felt cool. I felt, but I mean, I mean, I felt the mental strain. It's not an easy to navigate game, but it's, you know, it's it's comprehensible. It's mm. uh, kind of it kind of has like a it reminds me of Dark Souls too, because what happens is you go all the way to the end of somewhere, and once you get to the end, it, it punts you back to the beginning, and you could you mm-hmm. can find that you can find like a couple paths. You can just go all the way down, and then you end up back in the beginning. Yeah, versus um, you and Nikki, which is like a game a six hour fantasy star two dungeon <laughs> i mean if you you can you can end up on t- back at the hub and you mean nikki that'll be take like four hours of walking around oh it's so good <laughs> <laughs> i think i think you nikki does funnel you like usually into the hell area but then like navigating Ooh. the hell area itself is just like extremely taxing <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely miserable <laughs> just unpleasant in every way <laughs> <laughs> in the very affecting um, thematic way, but goddamn, it's rough. So I guess we have to talk about Midden's battle system, and um, it's bad. <laughs> no, no. There's that's one not good nice. part. I can <laughs> the the best part. I, I like about it. It reminds mm. me of when I was talking about Paper Mario, and it go, this goes beyond Paper Mario in, in that um, Midden's uses its own uh, verbs and nouns. Basically, it, it re- retextures yeah. all the. I don't remember what they use for HP and MP. It's like nerve and, you know, brain or it's not brain. It's something like that though. Nerve and pulse. I got it. And so like, so like, it has this kind of uh, it it try it tries to set these emotions out with its verbs and nouns, and I like that a lot. I, I like how the damage is, you know, it's not like fire and water because that's boring. It's it's uh, rift, choleric, supine, melancholy, and sanguine. And I, mm-hmm. I liked those touches. I liked how it had like these poetic aims. Yeah, and his game um actually tried to do that with um the cold shoulder and fuck you attacks, which I <laughs> felt pretty good about. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, but actually playing middens is kind of boring. But I don't think it's it's not like it's not exceptionally boring in my opinion. It's about as mm-hmm. boring as Persona Five, which for most people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had a pretty good I had a pretty good overall time with it because it was over like quickly, so it didn't have time to like wear on me with its with the with the weaker parts of it. Like I I had a nice time. I just felt like it was um a good but unincisive thing. Like I just kind of wanted it to have a stronger effect on me. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I I really respected what it was going for. I, th- that's that's um, also what I mean too. It's like 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 when we say oh it's it's bad it's boring it's actually very typical like if you were to play Grandia one you know the game's probably gonna be about that hard you're not you're not gonna really need like you'll never need to uh, here's a way to put it like you have all the tools at your disposal to win a battle and as long as you use those tools nothing will ever go wrong and that's usually how most RPGs are balanced anyway and Mittens is like that um, the other thing I actually like about it though is that you get into this kind of ritualistic way you approach the battles. Because mm-hmm. you get into a battle and you need to summon Om, Yam, and Lam. And, and those are your party members, but they're also, like, chi-like aspects of the nomad self. And so he has to, like, do these out-of-body extensions of himself every single time. And it's cool in the sense that you're, like, a ritual killer, basically. You start your you start the a fight against usually a defenseless enemy, and you're, like, channeling your chi so you can <laughs> obliterate them. But the downside is that uh, battles that should take one or two rounds end up taking four or five because you have to summon because the um, you're you have to summon each party member at the start of each fight. <laughs> yeah, and they get they get they don't get XP unless they're summoned, so you you got to do it every single time, and that's mm-hmm. just like oh, you know, very time consuming, in a game yeah. in a game with uh, 
probably around 250 unique battles. Mm -hmm. But again, if you only if the game only insists on you do, do killing 30 enemies, so if you yeah. move through it at kind of that pace, then it's not actually that demanding. I think like I think the pacifist thing where you just explore slowly, like put a lot of space in between each battle. Um, if you just kill every enemy you come across, then you'll wind up there like real quick. But um, if you do let it space out and explore the space and then just kill every kill the enemies that actually attack you, then I imagine that would be a pretty well paced experience. I don't think the I don't think the triteness of the battles would really bug me then. It would have that kind of ritualistic quality, like you said. Yeah, and you'd be you'd be kind of you kind of actually be exploring the battle at a, at the same same pace you're going through the levels. And mm -hmm. I mean, I recognize it's actually difficult to maybe balance middens because it's really it's like open really open ended that you can go anywhere from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And so if you so I mean imagine a low level character going anywhere, like there there's you have to make the decision, like, will I have very strong enemies that'll instantly kill the player if they go there, or will I have kind of a, a, a middle line so that you can go somewhere out of your level and still maybe eke out a win. And I recognize, you know, he went for that. And like I can't necessarily say that's bad, but it just um it what what it does is just like make one playstyle more have a better tempo than others, basically. Yeah. I think there's um two solutions um that I can see. One would have been to abandon XP maybe, um, and just have you approach every fight on the same terms, but then that one that wouldn't really work with the building up to the big kind of climax. So I don't know, that's one that's one potential approach. Another would have been Balancing every enemy for the same um, cap capacity. Another one, I think, I think my issue with it was that when I got to a really hard, like, end gamey enemy, and then fought it, and then it clearly had way too much HP for me to deal with it at like level two or level three, um, but its attacks weren't um, fatal. Um, like, what's the word? Proportionately. Like, it dealt very, it dealt pretty piddly attacks, but I was able to, but it took too, way too long to kill, so I wound up fighting this thing for like eight minutes waiting for it to die, <laughs> um, <laughs> while being able to heal myself, and I'm just like, should I just quit the game and go fight, and go fight elsewhere for a while? Like, I think what this, what it really needed was for, just to make the enemies, like, really lean into the idea of, Hey, you you are going to fight some enemies and then die. And then some of them are going to be way too strong for you and they're going to kill you. And I think that would have appealed to me more. Yeah, and it reminds me of uh, when Mega Ma or Mega 10 games get too easy cuz you have these full heal and full revives, but you also have the knowledge that this enemy will never be able to kill you. So like all you're doing is just pissing away turns because you know it's going to be the same thing every turn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, what did you think about the climax in general? All right. So you reach the end of the game. You get well. Let's just like the what's the overall arc of the game? You start off and you're introduced to the one character. Let's yeah. Let's talk about how it works. <laughs> yeah. 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 You could do it. You're already on a roll. Sure. All right. Cool. You start off the game, and the first thing that happens is you're introduced to your gun. <laughs> um, the gun has an eye and a mouth, and it's creepy. It's unnerving, it unnervingly sexy gun. Yeah, it's kind of it's slightly erotic. I actually, would say with sensual. The way it lips its lips, yeah, sensual with the way it it licks its lips in anticipation of its murders, um, and it makes you answer several questions in the affirmative. Basically, like, are you ready to come and murder some peeps? And then when you do, and if you click no, then it ends the game right there. So you. The game is very much asking you to consent to a specific kind of play experience in which you murder a bunch of peeps. Uh, so then you say yes, and you go down into the, and you appear in a game world, um, and it's very overtly like a nonsensical dream space from the beginning. Um, there isn't really a framing, there is not a framing device beyond that, like there isn't Yume Nikki, you're not explicitly in a dream space, but yeah. Um, it seems it seems implied that you're in kind of a state of purgatory, though, because it people mm -hmm. people constantly refer to their past lives, 
But you know, yeah, there's no nothing explicit. You're up to it's up to your interpretation. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and you pick up the gun, and then you're given two verbs: you can talk and you can shoot. And if you shoot people, then they either and if you talk to people, then they will interact with you. Um, and if you shoot people, then they either um, die instantly or you enter an encounter. And when you beat kill an enemy in a battle encounter, then you gain XP and you gain nothings. And once you have a certain number of nothings, um, well, before I get to that, you just explore. So that's the pacing of the game is you walk around talking to things and shooting things. And collecting a resource. Like, that is the arc. And it's a very open-ended, big world um, where the connections don't necessarily make logical sense and there are one-way passages and stuff like that. And uh, Does that make sense so far? Yeah, that, that, no, that was a good, that was a good uh, description of it. Um, you can collect items also. Um, there are... Yeah, yeah, you could trade for items. And it's kind of... I mean, it's a really straightforward RPG system where, you know, you have buffs, debuffs afflictions mm. spells and you're, you're like you don't know it but what you're doing is amassing power to face the boss of the game mm. and exactly so you run for enemy enemies can be of any strength um stronger enemies give more xp but there's not an external indication um before you fight an enemy how strong it is yeah um so what this means what this could potentially mean is that you fight a bunch of enemies that fight an enemy and it turns out is way stronger than you it kills you um but in practice um you get through kind of a rough early game for the first half hour or so and then once i collected a little bit of power and figured out sort of the ritual to the fights i progressed through every other fight pretty much effortlessly there are uh, there i mean it's not extremely well balanced there is mm-hmm. In particular, there's a spell called Whelm that Om can learn at I don't know in, in the in their teens basically. Yeah. And Whelm will it, give you every single buffs. buff. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the thing about buffs is they don't have a hundred percent. Um, they don't always apply to the character they're casted on, but it it, it doesn't really matter. You, the thing is like mm-hmm. once you get one or two of those on a character, they're not going to die. Hmm. It's. It's an ambi- it's really ambitious in the sense that it has a ton of these kind of interacting systems. You have MP also, which is um, your whenever you summon one of your familiars or chi familiars, then they get all of their MP restored. So really, the only resource that matters is the main the avatars, the nomads MP, um, which gets healed at every save point. But because you can walk back to save points without fighting enemies, there are no random encounters. Um, then all that means is that you fight a couple enemies and then run out of MP, walk back to the re- to the save point, walk back to where you were, fight more enemies. Um, so it's not really the same as like a standard Dragon Quest push pull type risk reward thing. It's a matter of do I want to spend the time to go back to the save point right now? And yeah, it's also like uh, playing like that's boring. I played like that for a while, and I can confirm it's really boring. Like, yeah. like a quick patch that would just be instead, you know, giving the nomad full MP after a battle. Like, you know, why not? If you if yeah. if, if if the safe point if there's nothing like in the way of going to a safe point every time, and mm-hmm. then it's like effectively the same to give them an MP restore after battle because at any time you can be in that state of going back and getting the full MP store, right? Yeah, exactly. But um, what you can do instead of going back every time, because at some point I was like, you know, I'm not going to go back every time. You can just press forward until you find another save point and then start fighting there, which is more interesting. <laughs> but it's um, still like... One time, uh... one time, though, I did walk into a one-way room where enemies were blocking my path. Um, and I just realized, you also have a third verb, um, guitar, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which sometimes makes some stuff happen on the screen. It's basically if there's an obvious obstacle blocking your way, then you want to guitar it away. I like, which is cute. Yeah, I really, I like the guitar playing. I really like it. It's yeah. like, I thought it was nice. Like this, this, this game is um, ugly and revels in its val- uh, and its like violence. But then, mm. you, you, the nomad also plays guitar for some reason. It's just like this suspended tragic moment or whatever yeah. melancholy. It's cool, but yeah, it's it's not, a moment of calm. But it's not used too. for anything except to like get rid of tentacle barriers. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so it's a, so it's a, it's a cute. 
weird inclusion that I appreciated. It was kind of, it reminded me of the Yume Nikki effects. Yeah. That how they were usually just there for flavor, but then sometimes were useful in the world. Well, I mean, yeah, it has like, it's like a very video gamey result, this like, uh, yeah, oddly noble thing, but. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's like, it, it's, it's a lock. There are locked doors, but you have the guitar from the very beginning. So it's not like lock and key design. It's a lock and key where you're given the key at the very start. So it's not, an, so it doesn't really annoy me. It's still completely open ended. Yeah, it's not. It's just like, I, I, I kind of wish the guitar had more interactions, basically. It's like you could yeah. play it for certain creatures, or you could, you know, if it came relevant at other times and functioned like a guitar. But yeah, I still like it. It wasn't relevant during the. They have like a tutorial for it, but then it's not relevant in the climax at all. Yeah, so it, yeah. it's, a, it's kind of a setup without really much payoff. Yeah. It's like, it just kind of, for how thoughtful of an inclusion it feels like, yeah, it's just kind of just pushed to the side. Yeah. It's cute, though. I'm glad it's there. <laughs> um, so yeah, you walk around, you explore the, you explore this Yume Nikki world, um, killing whenever you feel like it, and then sometimes you're forced into it, but very, but kind of rarely. Um, and then once you collect 30 nothings, um, the gun, which you've been using this whole time and which introduced you to the game and is also kind of the only character. Um, oh yeah, yeah, the... there's, there are actual more cut scenes where Genie will talk about, um, is that the name of the gun? Yeah, yeah, Genie's actually the name of the gun. That's only in the sequel cool. though. Weird, oh, weird cool. lore. I haven't played there. it yet. Yeah, I haven't played it. I haven't played it either. I just know. <laughs> from reading people's reactions online but anyways genie will talk about uh you know, just pose weird ethical questions to the player that usually usually have nihilistic conclusions or they'll talk about killing or whatever like those are the only like narrative thematic interactions in the game because mm-hmm. you could talk you could you could talk to npcs but they don't they, they kind of just they don't really say anything interesting like ever they, yeah that was kind of my vibe and there, there, there are a couple where maybe they're kind of pointed and they kind of reflect on some kind of anxiety someone's feeling, but they're usually purposely dull. Like someone will comment on maybe they left their oven on or not, and it mm-hmm. I could see the dissonance they're going on for because you're exploring around this place and then these, uh, I mean these these like collages and Cthulhu looking things are commenting on very mundane mundane. Mm-hmm. stuff like it, it, maybe it's like um say in Uta, like maybe they're like these people are all normal but you can't see it i don't know i mean i don't know what it's trying to do except it, it, i didn't really feel like it fits <laughs> yeah it might do the it might be doing the um they look like monsters to you silent hill three thing yeah that's um, that's what it it, it kind of seemed to have an undercurrent of that but it's not there's an enemy in the there's an enemy in the climax called serial killer yeah and i'm like ah, oh, okay they, is that what is that what you're going for here they, 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 there's no attempt in trying to pull any of those strings together, so I, I, I think the game would have been better served actually with no dialogue from the NPCs. It would have been stronger than very subpar, distracting dialogue, which I is agree. a stance I usually don't take. But it didn't, it didn't like help. And this game actually doesn't need any dialogue beyond when, when the gun talks to you. There are just so many kind of moving pieces in the game. Um, there's the dialogue, there's the fighting, and the fighting has four party members, each of which have upwards of, like, 16... More, no, more than that. Like, a, a huge number of skills each. Um, and there's the framing device, and there's the exploration, and there's experience. Um, it seemed like there was just a lot of pieces that don't really feel incisive to me. Um, and I think the dialogue is one of the ones that... The non-gun dialogue is one of the things that could have been easily sacrificed... Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Cause like I said, cause like, it doesn't feel like my gauge for this stuff is like, um, Katamites is magic wand where that, that game is, um, tries very hard to remove any possible through line to the RPG experience and just be kind of as trite as possible, like in a very deliberate way. Um, like it doesn't let you invest in the exploration. It doesn't let you invest in it. It has dialogue and fighting, but it doesn't let you invest in any of it. And it doesn't have, and the overarching story ends very anticlimactically. Um, so this doesn't feel like that. This doesn't feel like it's going for like complete non-resonance deliberately. Um, it just feels, I think the thematic stuff with the gun is actually real strong. It just, 
um, isn't very incisive due to things like I don't really know what the dialogue adds to the ideas that are there, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. It doesn't. Uh, like like I said, the or the best read I can give it is something like, ooh, I don't want to spoil near for John. But anyways, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Okay, the, yeah, uh, don't, spe- don't spoil near for I'm me. Not, I'm really I excited did, about that game. I didn't spoil it. I didn't spoil <laughs> cool. it. Even. Don't worry. I'll just say it. Like, people who know near know what I'm talking about. That's all I yeah. get. You know, it works like that. Yeah. And um, so... 30 nothings? 30 nothings. You get yeah, the, well. the, the gun tells you, hey, you can shoot yourself in the head at any time. Um, hey, let's let's put a content warning on this, on this by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, could, yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Um, it, and then that and that enters the end game area. It's kind of just Persona 3 edgy, too, because that doesn't... There's, there's no reason the Nomad has to transfer himself into his mind world that way, except... Except that it's shocking, because the game's not really about the Nomad's depression, really. Mm-hmm. It's not really about his internal pain, not really. So it's just kind of crass, but you know. Yeah, yeah. again, it's one of those things that just contributes to it feeling kind of unincisive. Like, what? How does the, how does this contribute to the overarching story? Which is pretty straightforward. I with the the gun, the arc with the gun is pretty straightforward. But yeah, I'm excited to hear. You. So. I think that generally, I think that it could have just withstood some editing to punch up the story that's there, you know. Yeah, um, I can so agree the, to that. The end game area, I didn't really explore it. I think it was pretty linear. I'm not positive. There might have been more branching than I realized. Um, I tried to explore it. How it's how it how it works. I miss some areas, but how it works, there's just uh, a straight line mm-hmm. and. You can go down different paths that end in dead ends, and okay. that's it. Okay, I think I just, I think I just missed the dead ends. Um, the last, the last air crawl up the arm is pretty cool, and then there's yeah. a really a fairly tough fight right before the final boss room where there's no save point that you can go back to, um, so you can kind of cripple yourself before the final boss um, by using a bunch of your resources, and just as an optional challenge, which I thought was a cute conclusion. Yeah. They're, 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 well, in those rooms, there are also optional fights there, but not all of them are difficult. Some of them are difficult. Yeah, but also, but throughout the end game area, there are um, save points. It's just that that one is the one that's before the final boss and after a one-way passage. You can't walk back off the arm, um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can't. And I'm going to do a strange pull. I, I played Final Fantasy Dimensions, and there's a part in that game where you actually end up in a cleft between time. And in the cleft between time, you fight um, manifestations of like uh, like like uh i want to say seven deadly sins but it's not really like that but it's something okay. like that that come out of the party members and you fight like <laughs> you know what the, the demons they've been struggling with the whole time but when you exit nomad in middens you just fight you fight kind of arbitrarily named things serial like, killer and behemoth and it's they're they're almost reaching at something that has to do with the id of a person but also not really and it, it's I, I was confused at like you know what? What is this whole area trying to do? And I'm I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure if it really coherently nailed anything about the Nomad. Mm-hmm. But again, the ending with Genie is still really good. Yeah, I I just don't. I think they probably could have just gone straight to the ending with Genie when you exit Nomad. The the area before that just felt like more an extension to the rest of the play experience. Yeah, a straight creepy line to Genie would have been great. Yeah. Um. Genie, that that last fight's cool. Um, the dial, that's some of the sharpest dial, like the, there's really good, everything Genie says is good. <laughs> like that's where a yeah. lot of the meany meat of the game comes in. It, it actually, the, I mean, it, t- it textured a lot of stuff I was thinking about while playing the game. Yeah. Um, it, the beginning is very strong. Like that stuck in my head. Um, I, I sampled, when I turned on the game, I think after reading the Zeal article, um, years, that was the first Zeal article was on Middens. Oh, um, really? Yeah. It's pretty See, cool. See that's that's funny because I I know this game from uh, Arcade Review article. And it's from cool. the second issue of Arcade Review, and so it's been written about like twice in you know arts magazines. That's cool. And now it's the start of our podcast. <laughs> a a yeah, new tradition is, is born. <laughs> um, but okay, so once um, maybe a standout thing is it's weird to explain it too, but that Genie talks about a concept of karma, mm-hmm. but they don't mean it like. They don't mean it like, 
you know, do a bad thing, bad thing happens to do a good thing, good things happens to do. They mean it like inevitability or destiny. They mean it like everyone dies and that's karma, which is a weird interpretation of karma. I've never seen before besides this game. And mm-hmm. it, and it, it seems, it seems to be using the word karma because it has those kind of spiritual connotations to it that maybe saying destiny or inevitability wouldn't lend it the same thing. And, and basically like a genie worships death and that's, that's why it refer, like references karma so much. But 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 I mean, genies a gun. Like, what else do guns do? <laughs> yeah, of course it references death. <laughs> yeah the the last boss fight is pretty challenging. Although I think it's still like we're talking about you if you do the right. I mean, if you just do use your tools available, you're not going to lose it. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's the first enemy that actually did a lot of damage to me. So I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah, that was my that was my experience. It's like, "Hey, this is." And you you played it with the um, level seventy version of the fight. Is it is yeah. the visual design different? Uh, so did you fight Genie twice? Yes, I or did. just one time. Okay, so then you yeah no it's, it doesn't change that much. Okay, I think I think you've. I mean, it's pretty much the same. The only difference between the two endings, and I don't know which ending you got actually, because I'm not completely sure on the triggers. Mm-hmm. But there's an ending where Genie kills the Nomad, and there's an ending where the Nomad just lives his life in the Rift. Okay. So it's so it's basically uh, the Dark Souls endings, actually. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I got the um, I got the one where Genie's at, where Genie um is floating in a pool of the Nomad's blood in a CG. Yeah. So so yeah, this is the one where Genie kills the Nomad. Gotcha. I, didn't, I didn't I didn't see that, but that's. So like so so a funny thing. One thing that tripped up other reviewers is the ending where nomad lives and not genie mm-hmm. this is called the genie calls it the pacifist ending because when you're fighting genie they say oh you're a pacifist and i think and it's just like a joke because i've killed you know 320 rift denizens at that point i'm not i'm the opposite of pacifist uh-huh. and oh, but a lot of people read that and they think it's literal like what is that this this game's definition of pacifism does is killing all these people actually pacifist yeah. but no to genie who, who worships death they think the, the the only way to save a person or, or, or their ultimate destiny is you know them dying. Mm-hmm. So a pass, he, th- th- so that's like his warped definition of pacifism, but it's not like I mean it's not a pacifist ending in the way you'd think about it after playing Undertale. Yeah, and yeah, I mean it's not even that kind of game. No. Um. Yeah, I. It's weird how much Undertale colors all of the um every <laughs> all of these shame play weirdo um yeah murder, I saw, murder um rpg maker games i saw i saw people bring up both undertale and spec ops have you played spec ops no i haven't played spec ops yet i mean i don't know it's not a big spoiler i'll just say when you spec ops um lies to you it says you're doing a good thing but you're doing a bad thing oh <gasps> yeah I've heard, i know i know the <laughs> gist of it yeah yeah i but, think somebody's imagining the things never mind <laughs> But but uh, I mean I mean honestly, when you play Call of Duty, you're doing a bad thing. You should already know that. But I'm I'm sorry. I, the, the discourse around Spec Ops is always just like, oh my god. But anyways, yeah. um, a lot of or I saw two. I saw two reviews. Not to say a lot of people. I saw two reviews that compared Middens to those games, and they called one of them called it a complicity sim, which is a word I never heard before. Oh, what? Interesting. Complicity sim, as in it simulates okay. complicity, right? Okay, that's actually excellent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that was an interesting word, and it's. It would be appropriate for a game like Spec Ops where it lies to you, but Minutes is consensual. At the start of the game, Genie asks you if you want to kill a bunch of things. And if you say no, you can't play it. You don't play it, it's over. So that's where I, I don't think Minutes is that kind of game. It's not trying to do a commentary on... It's not a commentary on whether or not you kill things in a video game, because the game doesn't function unless you kill these things. And it's yeah. not trying to trick you into killing them either. It says, we're going to kill a bunch of things. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I... I think I'm just coming off of... It, this game got me thinking... Alright, so can I... Let's get to your reading soon. Um, I think... I, I'm, I'm in the middle of it. This is part of it. Okay, yeah, go yeah. for it. Keep going. I'm, well, I'm, I'm doing it organically, but what do you got to say? I, I can wait. Um, well, my my initial reaction to the game... I played it for about an hour and a half, and then I played it for like an hour and a half yesterday and finished it. Um, but after that first hour and a half, I immediately loaded up RPG Maker 2003 and started making a game. And I've spent probably <laughs> like eight or nine hours on that since. Yeah, um, I mean that's 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 power. That's a good reaction. I think that's a like, positive review right there. But it was um, like it was like a visceral. Oh, I could do this better. But <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. So it got so it got me thinking of um, kind of what I wanted, and it, I wanted punchy dialogue that has impact. Um, so I 
started with like clear a clear setup, um, not lying, but just like with you as an explicit villain, um, but just you as the protagonist also. Um, not doing the finger wagging thing, just having the story where oh you are playing as a villain in this story, um, and then I made and then I plotted out ten bosses that were distinct, um, and then made them also do a lot of damage, <laughs> and gave each person four abilities instead of twenty, and then <laughs> not level up. So that's that. I try. I wanted to to so my reaction to Mins was I want this to be. Um, Still, I like the open-endedness. Um, I want every part of it to kind of punch harder, and I want the fights to be really short and impactful and you wanna, kill you a couple times before you figure you wanna, them out. You want to struggle, right? Yeah, I want it to be a struggle to do something bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's, that is where I'm going to get to my reading of Middens, though, because there, cool. is no, there is no struggle in Middens, and that's yeah. interesting. And it's, you know, it is, it is a bit... There's two words I'd use to describe playing along with middens i decided it's boring and it's bullshit but and i'm not going to say it's like that on purpose i'm just going to have like an interesting reading Mm -hmm. accompanying that go for um well okay let's start let's start from the the killings you know the appearance of killings and middens they're they're never it's never framed as a thing you're doing that's good it's not a good Mm -hmm. thing from the like the first time genie's like you know you can shoot things and kill them you might have done it already before but genie tells you in the beginning of the rift that you can do it and those enemies that you shoot when you fight them, they will beg for their lives. That's just, you know, one of their turns they'll choose it. And so, like, um, your first encounter with this mechanic is ugly, and there's not really any goodness to it. Mm. And, I mean, so that's so that's what I was saying to the person who thought it was a complicity sim. Even though it's like every other video game where you go around and you kill the monsters, I mean, it, there's 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 there wasn't, like, there's not a lie to this game. You're an interdimensional serial killer, and you're going along with Genie, and you, I mean, that's just what you do. Yeah. And so Genie throughout the game gives anti-respect to life. And he, he, he kind of like tries to, he kind of nullifies the meaning of life by, by worshiping death, worshiping death and bringing up ethical conundrums and trying to call humans, uh, hypocritical. I, I mean, I wish it took better notes on his cutscenes because they, what happens when you play the game is like, you'll go, you'll be, or at least when I was playing, cause I was clearing out things for hours at a time and you'll hit a new area and Genie will say like three lines, and then it'll be hours again until I have a Genie cutscene. I'm like, oh man, I was like, I forgot these are in the game, but mm-hmm. whatever. But um, so like, I think it's accurate to call Mins a post Yuminiki game, and we were talking about Yuminiki as a frame of reference mm-hmm. because that's the best way to think about how this game came to be and how to play the game. But I wouldn't call it a Yuminiki fan game, even Not- though it came from those circles. Even though, I mean, I fully support the Yuminiki fandom. That's just not really what this game is. Mm. Um, Yuminiki, the character of the game is the space, I think. Yeah. Um, whereas I think with this, it's the more the arc of your murders and your relationship with Genie. Je- Genie actually upstages a lot of the areas, mm-hmm. even especially if you don't... <laughs> if you play it like I did. Yeah, you don't take 15 hours to play the game. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, Yuminiki has a few literal areas. There's that city block... The pyramid, forest, a lake, and there's a village, I think. Mm-hmm. But most of the literal stuff is like really loose and displaced, and they usually have like impossible proportions. Like when you walk up the stairs to the pyramid, it just takes forever. And when you when you find that that village, it's just like it doesn't really house anything. It's just like they're kind of just like props. Yeah, it's like a dream. <laughs> yeah, but when Midden's has its literal spaces, they're a lot more established and concrete. And that's a pun, but I don't mean it. But, like, so when you're in, there's a factory in Middens, and when you walk around and explore, it's just, like, it's it's obviously a factory. And it's like this, when you're in that subway, too, it's like, this is a subway, and there's no, there's no dreamlike proportions to the subway. There, there's there's nothing off about the subway, it's just an actual subway that period in the void. And there's there's a lot of spaces like that in Middens. Um, there's subways, apartments, elevators, warehouses, cities, streets, sport cars, that are, are like, these fully realized thing alongside the blank voids and the static overlays and collages. Which basically, what, 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 I'm, what I'm saying there, what to get out of that is Middens is... The, the void in Middens is very industrial, and there's a lot of modern industrial iconography in Middens. Mm-hmm. Now, to go back to Yumi Nikki, the game... Yumi Nikki just doesn't feel masculine to me at all. Which, which that's kind of obvious because it's about Marotsutsuki, and it's centered around her pain in navigating these spaces that are, like, 
you know, represent her dreams, right? Yeah. There's pain. Just it's her yeah. pain is the story. And you know, you know, and, and but like to 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 the credit to um, Kimiyama, that, that's the creative of Nikki, I think. I don't know if I got it right. But mm-hmm. uh, that kind of story could feel filtered through patriarchy. But I don't think Yuminiki does, and I could say that just because I it, it really lacks masculinity that I've known like my whole life, mm-hmm. and so that's why I mean in a lot of ways Yuminiki is like really close and immediate to me. But uh, Mittens instead is like this really overtly masculine thing, and I, I'm not I'm not trying to equate masculinity with only with like toxic masculinity, but the game's about subjugation, and it, mm-hmm. and and um, this part's not really obvious, but there's there's like uh, in some of the art design, there's you can see women use this props. Basically, there there will be like a naked woman with her face covered out by a skull to represent death or something. Mm-hmm. And it reminds me of that uh, John Berger quote, uh, where um, oh, where like someone will make a painting called Vanity and they'll paint a naked woman, but all it really is like representing is the author's own vanity and opinions of women. Yeah, but but so like so so like probably the the most I mean, the obvious example is this is the second form of genie has a woman draped, woman dripped over the barrel of genie's gun. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I I would just basically say the game is not very kind to women in in the portrayals, but at the the same time, it's it's very, very, very nihilistic about the role of men, assuming Nomad's uh, a guy, which I mean, even if Nomad's not the guy, uh, the developer was, Mm -hmm. and and so it's very nihilistic about his role and the role of living in a system, and so it perpetuates like a self defeating self defeating patriarchal fault. Like, I was born to do this. Forgive me. And and Genie says that he just says over and over again, "I'm sorry, but I'm going to kill you. I'm really, really sorry, but I have to kill you. Like a thousand condolences, but I'm going to kill you." <laughs> and so like he's joking, but there's a reason he chose to apologize. It's because mm. he views this as a natural state. And. Guns, gun violence, gun control as a symbol is a patriarchal sickness. Like you can't, you can't talk about talking about gun control. Talking about gun violence is like it, it's perpetuated by men and it's paired with men. And that's just something that came to mind to me immediately when, I mean, this gun's talking about how, I mean, when this gun worships death. He explicitly brings up gun control. He says yeah. the words gun control. <laughs> he says the words gun control, and that's when uh, uh, someone was like, you know, men's doesn't really earn doesn't really earn those comments about gun control the game's not about gun control and i was kind of i was like well i mean it's not literally about the effects of gun control but it's about this gun who loves killing i don't know what you mean but whatever yeah i get that so that's that's what i mean meant when i said the game's bullshit is that what you're doing is bullshit you're 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 doing stuff that sucks and you don't really have a choice in the matter except the very one the one the beginning where you're like okay i'll do this but you don't know what that that means necessarily Except, but like it's implied that Genie already knows, and Genie's done this before. And and with that being said, there are, there are scenes in the game that were like genuinely beautiful. There's um, sometimes you go into rooms and they'll be like closed in. You'll be gazing at the stars, and a mm-hmm. lot of the like the interpretations of the flora and fauna and the furniture looks like a Max Ernst painting. And I mean, you're looking out at the stars and you feel feel the moment you feel the stillness and then you, you pull out your gun and kill the star gazers <laughs> yeah <gasps> and so well and then there's i remember to that yeah there's something to that and i remember what's like uh genie talks about gun control at the beginning but what what shocked me was actually genie's speech at the end and i don't know if you got to read this because this is when genie's dying mm-hmm. they say unbreathable air Water that does not quench, food that does not nourish, love that does not please or inseminate, even last words ring hollow, life has lost its luster, the mind commits all it learns to a tomb. So I did get to read that, yeah. You did get to read that? Yep. So you, so they say, yeah, that, I, 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 I like that. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just it was just like a literal affirmation of Genie's nihilism in that this gun is not happy in its, with its role. And it has mm-hmm. probably never been happy, but it's a gun and can't do anything else. But before I faced Genie at the end, I felt, I mean, when I see all these modern dingy spa- industrial spaces, I was already thinking about, well, and also, you know, the game's like, kind of sucks to play. I was thinking about, like, modern nihilism that has to do with industrialization. Like, I was thinking about climate change 
and how we're, we we can't do anything about it and all these these just monstrous uh industries and machines are just booming and or you know there's very little we can do about it i guess in our current system that i mean that kind of structural nihilism is is what i was feeling personally before i read genie's speech and then I, I read that echoed back at me and i was like oh wow i was like maybe maybe they actually were going for something there it's like a feeling of not being connected to these industrial environments basically mm. And then just that feeling of being dissatisfied with a role that was kind of thrust upon Jimmy, Yes. While yes. also taking a kind of sick glee in it and also and doing nothing to yeah. step outside that role. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, I mean, Jeannie's basically a reactionary or some gleeful troll on the internet. That's basically mm-hmm. what Jeannie is. And, and what what genie represents is a meaningless revolution. Revolution, and I say that like a, a bold italic word, but an, a a way to a, another. There's another like, or Danganronpa basically is a game that that's about a meaningless revolution, mm-hmm. where the nihilistic trolls actually change the world to something worse. But it, but so like I I faced that and I felt a renewed responsibility to not perpetuate violence like that, to not be this tragic existence that can only hurt, and. Um, Mittens is really effective at eliciting like this revulsion to ugly impulses that cause people to be, you know, spiteful trolls, but but then has no imagination on how to be good, and mm-hmm. that's you know that's basically it. Like there's, uh, it's it's difficult to glean a lot out of it, but it's also very impactful. Yeah, I think it's a very pointed, or rather, it's a kind of aiming to be a pointed. Um vision of that kind of despair, that kind of just, yeah, I think that's a good read. I think that's a solid reading. And I I don't think it needs to necessarily uphold something to still be impactful in that sense. I think that's really valid. It doesn't need to uphold or condemn anything. It's just the, what I think is like, you know, if someone agrees with Genie and plays him in, they're going to get something way different out of it. And that's Mm -hmm. interesting, but also that's like where I'm like, where basically I I wouldn't make something like Mittens right, but it's still a very interesting game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that thank you. That I was kind of hoping going in that I'd get a little more out of the game just from hearing a good reading. So that that <laughs> helps me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a good chance a lot of there's some people, a couple mm-hmm. of you out there, have probably already played Mittens and were like, yeah, but what was it about? I mean, yeah, yeah I can guide guide you along there. Cool. Yeah, that's kind of where I was at. I was like. Hmm, that ending seemed like it was kind of going for something. I was bored most of the time, but I would like to know. I would like to know a little bit more of that because it'll help me appreciate the game more. Because yeah, glad glad to help. Glad to help. Yeah. So that that's good because it means that Bins is not just like shitty Yume Nikki. It's not a shitty version of something else. It is its own thing, and it's going for its own thing, and maybe it doesn't quite get there, but it's. I understand why the game connected with a lot of people because it did connect with a lot of people. I posted about it on Twitter and while I was finishing it up, and a couple, quite a few people was like, "Oh, I love this game so much." It's also uh, striking, right? It's visually yeah. incredible in, in battle, at least when you first. Uh-huh. Like, I actually I featured the, it. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and and you know, and on the uh, and the environments, you're right. Whenever I was playing it, um, and and Anna walked by, um, they said, straight up, like, "Oh God, that game's fucking gorgeous." <laughs> yeah. Um, like, multiple yeah. times. And I, every time I was, like, in the middle of fighting and kind of being bored, but then I would be, like, i kind of shake myself a bit and they'd be like, wow, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, so, like, major props for that. Yeah, before I played the game, I featured it in my visual essay about RPG Maker games because mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it is straight up in the tradition of, like, surreal artists. I name dropped one, and I, I can't name drop a lot because I'm actually not smart on the name dropping, but yeah. it's in that tradition, and it's really good at collage art and, like, pulling together desperate disparate parts of society and culture mm-hmm. and yeah it i mean the reason why it's i'm able to talk so much about it and say it has such an impact is because it actually has a very conscious and pointed aesthetic ability mm-hmm. even if it's like ludic language is not nearly as strong yeah so i think that's where that's where a big part of it of um that there being so many moving pieces kind of detracts from it is because it when you have so many different things to focus on and some of them are lame it makes it it detracts <laughs> from the things that are done extra super duper well um mainly the experience the all of genie's character um and the arc with his character and then the 
environments themselves and the enemy designs themselves, which are gorgeous. It might be like the first Dragon Guard, but I actually don't know what that's like. So that's just I just threw that out there. Yeah, if the if the fights, I think if it was more a little bit more emotion, like I I really like that reading. Um, I think if it had ended up been a little more viscerally and emotionally impactful to me, um, it would have. Yeah, I, then I would have been prompted to dig in a little more and then kind of appreciate yeah. its finer aspects a little bit more. Yeah, its tempo kind of... It's pulsing there, I guess. Like, it doesn't elicit its strong emotions very often, but when it does, I'm just like, whoa. But yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, I think that's... So I'm going to probably keep working on my RPG Maker game. I'm really pleased with that so far. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I'm excited to see good. how it turns out. Yeah. Um... So thanks, Middens. That was the same thing with um, Lisa, actually, where I played like a half hour of it, and then I think I went and finished my Witch game over the next like week because, and then I didn't play Lisa again. I just the first half hour was so resonant to me, and then I was just it was like, oh, well, now I'm gonna go make art. So I think <laughs> I think when a game has that impact, it says something positive. Yeah. It also kind of seems like you're sucking out the energies like a video game vampire, but... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I forget what the next next month's game's called. It's, um... Do you oh, remember? Oh, shit, I do, I do too. Um, something, something. Here. <laughs> well, it's it's a game that I, um... It was the first RPG Maker game I think I ever finished. Um, it's like Slime's Revenge and Co. Something like that. Yeah, it's not, you know what? I don't think it matters too much. We'll play it. We'll, Close enough. You can't, it's, I had to download it on, I had to download it on archive.org, so I feel like. Yeah. Maybe I can if post wanna, it if on Twitter. You want to play along? Later. Yeah, John will post it on Twitter later or something. I don't know. Cool. <laughs> I mean, it's probably not a game. It's not very long either way, right? Yep. But yeah, um, that's what we're going to be talking about next month. Um, and I'll just. I don't know how to close this. Uh, good night. Crack the world shell. Yeah. <laughs>